Okay, my name is Jay Shore. I'm a Certified Americans with Disabilities Act Advocate. And I want to give you some ADA workplace mandate considerations. Mandates are going to come back, so I want to give you some considerations as it relates to the Americans with Disabilities Act. This is absent intent or authority as legal advice, and this is intended to be aid and encouragement for those who would exercise and enjoy their rights under the ADA. Number one, does the mandate exacerbate an already existing disability? Examples are PTSD, COPD, shortness of breath, DV, SV, survivor, etc. That is a set of learned behavioral modifications. That's normal functioning. So people with PTSD put specific plans in place to help them navigate new stimulus. Uh, COPD people do this too. They avoid, like for instance, places where people would smoke. DVSV survivors, they want to make sure they're in a safe space. Usually that's not with something over their face, like a face diaper. The term learned behavioral modification is in the ADA, Title I, II, and Three. So uh, if you want to go do a search of Title I, and that's 29 CFR 1630 uh, and following, and search learned behavioral modifications, um, learned behavioral is what's actually the search term. It's learned behavioral and adaptive modifications. I think it's uh, what it's called. But uh, learned behavioral modifications is a part of that. So um, my normal learned behavioral modification is to avoid having things placed over my face. In other words, as a qualified individual with PTSD, COPD, and being a DVSV survivor, which already substantially impairs me, uh, one or more of my major life activities, my learned behavioral modification is to avoid triggers or stimulus that would exacerbate these conditions. A mandate that requires a face diaper does trigger and or exacerbate my already existing disabilities and as such discriminates against me on the basis of disability by denying me equal access. Number two, does the mandate create an additional disability? If a mandate such as face diapers is a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities, such as breathing, communicating, interacting with others, working, thinking, concentrating, cardiovascular operations, lung functions, etc. Then I would invoke the ADA, stating that the mandate does create an initial, if I didn't already have disabilities, or an additional disability, which substantially impairs my major life activities of blank. And these major life activities can be found at 29 CFR 1630.2I. Number three, is the mandated action a part of the essential functions of the job? I would check my original offer letter that outlines the essential functions or the written job description of my position. If the essential functions of my job do not include wearing a face diaper or a requirement for PPE or similar mention, then I would ask my employer to state in writing whether or not the mandated wearing of a face diaper is an essential function of the job and why this was not disclosed, disclosed to me upon being hired. Number four, invoking the Americans with Disabilities Act changes the duties of an employer and requires them to enter the interactive process and to avoid the unlawful acts of coercion, intimidation, threats, harassment, and interference with ADA rights. I'm gonna put this site in here, 29 CFR 16. 30.12b, which includes the right to have aid and encouragement during any exercise of ADA rights, including the interactive process, and employers will fight this to hell and back. If one lives in a one-party consent state or an exception exists for recording, consider this powerful tool. That's all I have to say about this right now, but if you need an ADA advocate who knows their way around this situation, hit me up.